Family Theater presents Leo McCary, Betty Lynn, and John Howard. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, brings you John Howard and Betty Lynn in Robert Louis Stevenson's classic, The Black Arrow. To introduce the drama, your host, Leo McCary. Thank you, Gene Baker. All of us spend many happy hours living in the shadow of our memories. One of my first recollections was hearing my mother read to me the wonderful stories of Robert Louis Stevenson. So tonight on Family Theater, it's like calling on an old friend when I introduce Robert Louis Stevenson's well-remembered classic, The Black Arrow. In this story of 15th century England, you will hear John Howard as Richard Shelton and Betty Lynn as Joanna Sidley, alias Jack Matcham. Come, let Jean Baker tell you about The Black Arrow. It was during the War of Roses, when the House of York and the House of Lancaster both fought to control the throne of England, that many scheming warlords came into power. Among these was Sir Daniel Brackley. Through murder, violence, and theft, Sir Daniel and his men of Lancaster had taken Tunstall Forest and the surrounding countryside. And although the tenants were forced to follow Sir Daniel, in their secret hearts they remained loyal to the House of York and Sir Ellis Duckworth, their rightful leader. Late one spring afternoon, two of Sir Daniel's loyal followers, Bennett Hatch and Nicholas Appleyard, stood before the Tunstall Moat House when a horseman approached. Uh, hey, look, uh, Bennett Hatch, tis Master Richard Shelton, Sir Daniel's ward. Most like Sir Daniel's in trouble again and needs men and arms to take more land. Uh, whoa, whoa there. Uh, uh, Master Richard, what news of Sir Daniel? <laughs> Sir Daniel has sent word to you, Bennett Hatch, for every man that can draw a bow to follow you to Ketley. What of me, Master Richard? Did did Sir Daniel send word to me, his most faithful bowman? Aye, Nick, that he did. (laughs) Sir Daniel ordered that Bennett Hatch join him at Ketley with reinforcements. Eh? And ye, Nick? Eh? He said ye are the only one who can protect his moat house. (laughs) Aye, when the pinch comes, he remembers the old shoe. Uh, there's not a man in all Tunstall Forest can back a horse or draw a bow like. Huh? What is it, Nick? Uh, the birds, Master Richard. The birds scattering in the forest. <laughs> Look at that. The arrow. They've got old Nick. Uh, the birds. Uh, enemies. Get down, Master Richard. They lame for us, too. Nay, hey, Bennett, they ride away. Uh, I'm oh, done poor for old Nick. that. Oh, son, remember what I forgot. Keep a good eye on the forest. When birds scatter, enemies appear. Now, Master Richard, pluck out the arrow. I will die in peace. Pluck it out. Aye. There. Tis out. Done with my whole England. God rest ye, old Nick. Look, Bennett. Tis a strange arrow. Aye, it is. Black and black feathered. With parchment wrapped around the shaft. Hey, wipe the blood away, Master Richard Shelton, and read it. Aye, tis clean now. It says... I had four black arrows under my belt, four for the griefs that I have felt. One is gone, one is well sped, for old Nick Appleyard is dead. One is for Mr. Bennett Hatch, who burned Castle Grimstone, walls and thatch. One for Sir Daniel of the Moat, who cut Sir... Sir Harry Shelton's throat. Enough, Master Shelton. This is unseasonable talk. One for Sir Daniel, who cut Sir Harry Shelton's throat. Sir Harry was my father, Bennett. Uh, Give me the parchment, Master Richard. My father. 
Murdered by my guardian? Hey, false words, Master Richard. But come, lad, I'll watch over old Nick while ye, Richard, take this note and ride post haste to Sir Daniel with the news of his death. <clears throat> Aye, sir. Heaven be with you, Bennett Hatch. I'll tell Sir Daniel you'll soon reach Ketley with more men. <laughs> Ketley of the surrounding countryside had come but recently into Sir Daniel's clutches. With it had come its rightful owner, Joanna Sedley, an orphan. After killing her guardian and taking Joanna prisoner, Sir Daniel had forced her to dress as a boy and named her Jack Matcham. In this disguise, he hoped no one would learn of her whereabouts until he could make himself her legal guardian, which would give him full control of her estates and her dowry rights. As Sir Daniel sits at dinner, Joanna huddles in a corner, praying for some means of escape. Now, lass, come hither. By the rude sturdy boy. You're well disguised. <laughs> he called me, Sir Daniel. Was it to laugh at my plight? <laughs> Someday you shall answer for this and for the death of my guardian, Sir Daniel. Ay, the lass has spunk. Ah, but come, Joanna, or Master Jack, as we call you. Sit down and eat. Nay, I will not eat with ye, Sir Daniel. You are Lancaster. I am a young Oh, listen to the child. You'll change your mind when I make you a rich wedding. You shall marry my ward, Richard Shelton. Do you use my name in vain, Sir Daniel? How, Richard, Richard Shelton? What news, lad? What brings ye here? Grave news, Sir Daniel. I bring ye tidings of the Black Arrow. The Black Arrow? Come, lad, out with it. Take ye this paper and read it. It was fastened to a Black Arrow. What's this? Nicholas Appleyard killed by the Black Arrow? Aye, it is true. But read further, Sir Daniel. Who cut Sir Harry Shelton's throat? What madness is this? Who dares accuse me of slaying your father? It is signed by Sir Ellis Duckworth. Sir Ellis Duckworth? It is time you knew, Richard. This Duckworth, a York like your father, killed him in cold blood so he could be made leader of your father's men. But it happened at Tunstall Moat House. Nay... It was between the moat house and Mount Holy Wood, Richard. Believe me, for I loved your father. But come now, eat up, lad, while I write a line for ye to take back to Tunstall. Ah, oh, well. It would have been in vain to argue with Sir Daniel. Richard. Hmm? Sir Richard. Make not a sign, I beg of ye, but tell me the straight way to Mount Holy Wood near Tunstall Forest. Why, lad, take the path by the windmill. It will bring you to the Till River Ferry. But why do ye seek Mount Holy Wood? My guardian once told me if ever I was in trouble, the good father at Mount Hollywood would help me. I need his help now. But, lad, cannot Sir Daniel help you? Nay, Sir Richard. He holds me prisoner. I do not understand. Look ye, if you would escape, Master Jack, go quickly. Sir Daniel returns. I am thank you, Sir Richard. I am ever in thy debt. Here's the letter, and God speed ye, Richard. Now I'll have words with the lad, Jack. Jack Matcham, where are you? He was just here. Joanna! By the sacred root, where is she? Richard, where is that girl? Girl? <laughs> Nay, sir, I saw no girl. Boy, then fool, where is he? He's worth 500 pounds. Um, off with you, Richard, to Tunstall alone. I'll take some men and hunt for Jack, and be it upon their heads if they find him not. <laughs> Sir Daniel and his men took off at once in search of Jack Matcham. Richard, unaware that the boy he had aided in escaping was actually Joanna Sedley, rode rapidly toward the Till River Ferry, soon overtaking the disguised girl. Has Sir Daniel missed me, Master Richard? <laughs> Aye, lad. And he started out searching. He told him not? Nay. First he asked me if I'd seen a girl, and I hadn't. Then he became excited about you, Jack, and asked me nothing more. Oh, thank you, Master Richard. You've helped me so far. Now I know not what to do. I helped you once, lad. I'll help you again. But I have no horse. I'm so weary. Here, ride behind me, lad. I doubt not that my horse can carry the added weight. Here, my hand. Now, up with you. Up. Ah, there we are. Off now. How came you with Sir Daniel, Master Jack? He killed my guardian and took me by force. I was grazed in the foot and walked lamely, boy. Boy? <laughs> Why do you call me boy, Jack? You're not the elder, are you? <laughs> Nay. If you don't like being called boy, shall I call ye girl, good Richard? <sighs> Never a girl for me. I hate the lot of them. Oh, I meant but pleasantry, Richard. 
If I talk of women, it's because I... Uh... Whoa there, whoa. Whoa. Sir Daniel's trumpeter. Why, they'll overtake us. Nay, we've a good start. And we're near the ferry. Oh, alas, Richard, I'm frightened. Don't let them get me again. Aye, I'll help you, Jack Matcham. Never fear. Come what may, I'll see you safe in Tunstall Forest. Come on, off! Faster the good steed ran, now distancing Sir Daniel's men, who were unaware that they were so close to their quarry. Through thicket and glade ran the horse, finally reaching the ferry which began the crossing. Nearly across the river were they, and from the far bank appeared Sir Daniel's men. Almost to the willows the ferry ran, and then... Richard's horse, struck by one of the arrows, lashed out in pain, upsetting the raft. By St. George, Jack. That makes a life I owe you. I swim like like a cannonball. Come on, Jack, we've got to run for it. We've lost them. Aye, they must take the long way around. Richard, you'll have to leave me. My foot, Richard, I, I can't go on. We'll hide till you rest your foot. But they'll find us, Richard. You must go on. I'll not leave you, Master Jack. Did you not just save me from drowning? Aye, then we're friends now. <laughs> we were never unfriends. Are we near Mount Hollywood? I've clean lost the path, Jack. But we've lost the Yorks, too. Now then, lad, lean on my shoulder and I'll help you along. Aye, I'll try. But right now my heart aches with hunger. Hunger? <sighs> Aye, lad, you are a bother. Well, here, take this bread and bacon. Sit down and eat whilst I go look for the road. We must run. There are men in this wood. Why, but where? We'll try this path. Just ahead, there is a mansion in ruins. It is grimed with fire. It must be Grimstone. It was Bennett Hatch that burned it. We can at least seek shelter in the rafters. Here we are, lad. And none too soon. Those men, bless them, they're Yorks. But you're dressed like a Lancaster. Here, come under these rafters. We'll be hidden from view. Aye, there must be 50 men, Richard. Aye. Look, that one there. He must be the leader. Men! Men! Good fellows all. We are here some 50 strong. Each man of us most foully wrong. We've lost our homes, our land, our friends. Shall Sir Daniel then reap the harvest? Shall he sit snug in our houses? Right ye are then. In our fellowship, we do only good for others. We right wrongs. I work only to avenge the wrong done our beloved leader, Sir Harry Shelton. Ye all have your places. Sir Daniel must pass this forest to reach the moat house. Let not one man's soul escape. Sir Alice, quick! Tis not Sir Daniel, but some of his men are fast approaching. Up with ye then, good fellows! Up! Quickly now! Remember your order! Let us go forth now, Richard, to Mount Holywood. To Mount Holywood? When Sir Daniel's men are in danger? Nay, I must warn them. Warn them? Richard, heard ye not, Sir Ellis? Have ye no heart for your own father? It was Sir Daniel slew your father at the moat house. Jack, I know not what to believe. But this I know. Sir Daniel has raised me. His men I've hunted with, played among. To leave them in this hour of peril? Nay, Jack, he would not ask it. Thus to warn Sir Daniel's men went the two. But they arrived too late. All of Sir Daniel's men had fallen, a black arrow through his heart. Turning to leave, they came upon Sir Daniel, who, alone and frightened, begged Richard to accompany him to the moat house. 
As they entered the moat house courtyard, Bennett Hatch hurried up to them from a group of soldiers. Master Richard, it is good to see you again. But soon we shall all go. Most of our men have been slain, and the, the woods outside Moat House lie thick with Yorkshiremen. If we are all to go, Bennet Hatch, then tis time I knew. How came my father by his end? Ask me not that again, Master Richard. I had no hand, no knowledge in it. I shall then ask Sir Daniel. Richard, if you have aught against me, speak and say. Sir, my father fell when I was yet a child. It has come to my ears that he was murdered. And that ye had a hand in his death. And ye think I would be guardian to the man's son I had murdered? I had hoped not. But indeed, sir, a wardship is most profitable. All these years have ye not enjoyed the revenues from my land and led my men? Aye, Richard. In this hour of my peril, when the forest is filled with the orcs who hunger for my destruction, I give ye my word. I had no portion in your father's death. But since ye trust me not... I shall banish ye to the room of the chapel. Then truly you must be guilty to hold me prisoner here. Take him, men. What? Who's there? Richard. Richard, tis I, Jack Matcham. Jack! Oh, Richard, this house is full of spies. Sir Daniel is truly a wicked man. You are in danger. Richard, do you know that tomorrow Sir Daniel plans to take your life? Soon Sir Daniel will discover I am here with ye. Ye know now, Richard, I am not Jack Matcham. By your life, lad, you're not Jack. I can tell that plainly now. Oh, Richard, I thought you'd never find out. Joanna! Joanna Sedley! Ye are Joanna Sedley, the maid that would not marry me. But I've changed my mind, Richard. If you were to ask me to be your wife... Your wife? Ah, oh, Joanna. He saved my life once, and I saved yours. Now I'm a prisoner. But I must say this. You're the best maid and the bravest under heaven. And if we escape from here, we will wed. But live or die, I love ye. Well, come up. Speak up, Jack. Be a good maid and say you love me. Why else, Richard, would I be here? Come, I will show you the trapdoor in this room. We will... Swift, Joanna. They know you're there. Come, Richard. Give me your hand. Joanna, Sir Daniel will follow by the trapdoor. Oh, but the window is unbarred. They will think you escaped that way. Come quickly. We're safe for a time, at least. Give me your hand and follow me. Passage grows narrow. Aye, we must be in the dungeons. We have walked quite a distance. Still is no outlet. Not so, Joanna. See, up ahead, that chink of light. A huge stone where the light shines through. <sighs> Help me, Joanna. Help me move this stone. If someone holds it, Richard, or it would move us. Nay, Joanna, there is a weight upon it. Look, that iron bar in the corner. Ah, the gods are with us, Joanna. At last we're free, Joanna. Look, see this rope. It falls into the moat below. If I but lower it... It's a great distance down, Richard. The rope still hasn't reached the water. It's so far, I'm afraid... Nonsense, we'll make it together. I'll go first and steady the rope. You follow. It's so far, Richard, we can't both make it. If he finds you here, he'll kill you. Go now, return later for Oh, me. Joanna, my love. I'll come back for you. Never fear. <laughs> The air roared in Richard's ears as he slid down the rope. He saw the stars reflected in the moat below. Then he lost hold and fell into the icy water. All feeling left him. Then oblivion. Struggling back to consciousness, he found himself in strange surroundings. Oh, where, where am I? Joanna, what has happened? Quiet, Richard, my boy. Don't talk. You've been sick. But you're well now. But ye... Who are ye? You're in the hands of friends, Richard. I loved your father. And I love ye for his sake. Ah. He must be Sir Ellis Duckworth. Aye, Richard. Your father led the Yorks through many a battle. Only to fall at the hands of one of his best friends, Sir Daniel Brackley. 
Since that time, my men and I have formed a fellowship, and we have used the Black Arrow only to right the wrongs done by Sir Daniel and his band of thieves and murderers. Then it is true. You are a good man and brave. But how did I get here? My men found you on the shore by the moat. He had a tear in your scalp when they brought you to me. But Sir Daniel, he was chasing me. He must have thought you dead when you hit the water. And Joanna? What of Joanna Sedley? Have you news? Aye, Richard. While you were still sick, three times we stormed Sir Daniel's castle, and three times we failed to rescue your beloved Joanna. But she is alive. Alive? Yes. But unless our plans are successful, we are to lose her come the morrow. Why the morrow, Sir Ellis? Sir Daniel weds her to Lord Shoreby for a great dowry tomorrow in the Abbey Church. At Mount Holywood? Aye. But I have a plan, Richard. We will dress as peasant farmers, our hats pulled low over our brows, and go to the church. Ah, Sir Ellis. Pray no one sees through our disguises. You must go on alone now, Richard, but I'll be nearby to help you should you need it. God be with you, Ellis. And to think I once believed Sir Daniel when he spoke evil of you. I must be brave. If only I reach the church and get inside. Just a minute, man. Huh? Who invited ye, a pauper, to the wind? Ah, I cannot deceive ye, Bennet Hatch. My life is in your hands. Richard. Richard Shelton. We thought ye dead. Why'd ye come? To make trouble? Nay, I came to see Joanna. I cannot let ye into the church. But by the saints, Richard, I cannot turn you over to Sir Daniel. Thank ye, Bennett. Let me stand here, then, by the church door. Hey, you may stand and watch, but I warn ye, Richard, no trouble. First came the bride, Joanna, pale as winter, clinging to Sir Daniel's arm. Next, the bridegroom, halting on a gouty foot, his bald head rosy with emotion. <coughs> Suddenly there was a movement in the crowd, and Sir Daniel fell, pierced by an arrow. He's Sir Daniel! He's Richard Shelton! Seize him! Shelton, he got Sir Daniel! Uh, an arrow in me. Where is Richard Shelton? Here I am, Sir Daniel. But I did not shoot the arrow that laid you low. Richard, how could you... How could you make war upon me? Nay, Sir Daniel. I made no war upon your life. I was your true friend until you sought my life. And even then I met you no harm. I came but to save Joanna. Oh, Richard, I knew you'd come. I knew it. To treat me thus. I who befriended you. Befriended me? Oh. Nay, Sir Daniel. He murdered my father. He stole my land, my money, Joanna. Everything dear to me in Tunstall Forest, she stole. For all these sins and more, you must seek God's forgiveness. Mine ye have freely. Ye mock me, Richard. But if ye did not aim the arrow... Remove it. Look here, lad. Is it black? Aye, Sir Daniel. It is the black arrow. Richard laid his guardian back gently on the ground and prayed for his unprepared spirit. As he prayed, he found another man upon his knees with uncovered head. Richard knew he was the archer who had killed Sir Daniel. How well I stuck with. Were it not so... It was the only way, Richard. Our plan had failed. But, Sir Ellis, this time it wasn't the battle of the Yorks and the Lancasters. This time it was to protect me. Lad, I... I heard ye with Sir Daniel. Ye took the better part and pardoned him. I took the worse. There lies the clay of mine enemy. Pray for me. Indeed, Sir Ellis, I will pray for ye. But if ye have so long pursued revenge, and find it now of such a sorry flavor, would it not be well to pardon all other enemies? Aye, it is well, Richard. For though the Lancasters and the Yorks may battle more, Though ye in your good time may win and lose at war, the fellowship is broken. The black arrow nevermore will fly. 
They that still live shall come to their quiet and ripe end in heaven's good time. For yourself, Richard, and your beloved Joanna, my blessings. Dwell your life apart from wars whene'er you can, together in the green forests where your two loves began. The Black Arrow is finished, Richard. This is Leo McCary again. In this evening's performance, I think all of us were impressed by the use of phrases like God be with you and God be your guide. I like to think that today these greetings have not entirely lost their meaning, that we can and want to still bring God into everyday life, that we can say good morning and mean God be with you this morning, or good day and mean God be with you today. But to do this, we must have God in our hearts. We must bring him into the home where our daily life starts before we can bring him back into the world. And the way to do this is through family prayer, a family united in prayer asking God to bring his peace and happiness into the home. And as I say goodbye, and mean God be with you, remember, the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood Family Theater is brought to you John Howard and Betty Lynn in The Black Arrow with Leo McCary as your host. Others in our cast were Junius Matthews, Tudor Owen, Ted DeCorsia, and William Conrad. This adaptation of the classic by Robert Louis Stevenson was written by Gene Wright, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Jaime Delvay. Our Family Theater broadcasts are made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who have so unselfishly given of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Gene Baker expressing the wishes of family theater that God's blessing may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week at this time when family theater presents John Charles Thomas in the short career of Stephen Coles. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is heard in Canada through the facilities of the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, in the Philippines by the Philippine Broadcasting Corporation, and is broadcast to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the world's largest network, the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>